My family situation is messy. For years ago, I, a 25-year-old female, was engaged to my high school sweetheart. My fiancé cheated on me with my sister who is 28. We had never had a good relationship even as kids. So after I found out I went scorched earth on both of them. She was so in love with my fiancé. But he dumped her within two weeks and was back trying to get me to forgive him. I didn't. My parents were initially on my side, but my sister had a nervous breakdown after being dumped and hospitalized. So they changed their tune to it's over now and you can't be mad forever. So I dumped them too and went to grad school on the other side of the country. My grandfather was livid with the whole thing, disowned my sister, and chewed out my parents. Sometimes it felt like he was the only one who was on my side and understood. I got my job to let me work remotely and moved back to take care of him when he got sick last fall. I was devastated when he passed a couple of months ago. I had been in limited contact with my parents since I came back, mostly because I didn't want to be an obstacle to my dad seeing my grandfather, but with the understanding that any discussion of my sister or what happened would end. It turns out that my grandfather left me virtually everything. He left enough for my father to cover a debt and some token stuff for a couple of other relatives, but he wrote a letter for everyone and did a videotape with his attorney explaining his intentions. I knew that he had done well for himself, but he lived a pretty simple lifestyle so I didn't realize how much money and assets he really had. I'd give it all up to have my papa back, but even after taxes I'm set for life with money. My parents are pretty mad about it. One reason for cutting them out was how disappointed my grandfather was with how they had treated me growing up versus my sister and over the fiancé debacle. There were other reasons, but that's what they fixated on. The will is pretty airtight, apparently, so my parents want me to do the right thing and share it equally between me them and my sister. Their argument is that I don't need it. I make more than both of them combined, and this would allow them to retire. My sister's not doing great and can't hold a job, so this would ensure she has something when my parents pass. I don't want to. My grandfather's wishes were crystal clear, and I don't feel like doing more than the minimum for any of them. They've been telling me that I'm being vindictive because of a mistake years ago. I can't deny that there might be a little vindictiveness in there. I don't want them to suffer necessarily, but I also don't feel like they deserve my help. Ah, if it isn't the consequences of their own actions coming back to bite them. If only they had cared about doing the right thing when your sister pulled her BS. Anything they're suffering from isn't mine to fix or carry for them. Not the idiot. I'm so sorry your papa is gone. He sounds very loving and interesting by the way you speak about him here. That said, set your family connections on fire and walk away. He would have wanted that, and he granted you the means to do so. Walk tall, you earned this. Where were the parents when grandpa fell ill and needed help? Normally, the first in line to assist would be the children, not the grandchildren as Opai did. Papa knew the extent of Opai's love for him and hurt Opai for being mistreated by her parents enough to orchestrate this last mic drop for doing Opai wrong. He was the only one who could in this way. Papa is a rock star, a guardian angel. This is not a decision for Opai to make, so there's no dilemma. Papa knew their parents would push back, which is why he went through so much trouble. Don't go against Grandpa's dying wish op. This is such a good point and your parents are again showing how awful they are by trying to emotionally manipulate you into going against his clear wishes. Your parents could have patched up these relationships while your grandfather was alive. They didn't, and these are the consequences. Don't share money with your truly terrible family, they don't deserve it. Take a nice long vacation and cut them off completely. So my husband's son Jay stays with his mom over the summer. He's in his mid-teens. He returns home and gets everything ready for school. I noticed his mom gave him a new gaming system, and I don't say anything, he just puts it in his room. It's not uncommon for his mom to buy him things. The police showed up at my house and asked to see both of us, his dad is working. I let the police come in and they asked about his gaming system. I told them that I saw him unpack it, I'm told it's stolen. Once Jay gets in the living room I freak out. I yell at Jay and the police arrest him and tell me I can come get him after the booking process, it'll take a few hours. I let them take Jay and the gaming station. I was so overwhelmed with everything. I call my husband, and he starts yelling at me because I let the police in the house and take Jay. I got an earful about it, and my husband goes to the police station, and it takes a long time for him to come home with Jay. My husband sends Jay to his room and yells at me about how I let this happen. I should not have let them into the house, and I shouldn't have told them Jay was home. I said why he acts like it was common sense, and I should have found out more information. He calls me names like stupid and naive. 
The fight turns into me asking how was I supposed to know how to act. I was taught better than to cover for a criminal. My husband said Jay is not a criminal. I pointed out he was literally just arrested for stealing. My husband told me to get out because of this. I'm staying with my sister and her husband. They're in just as much shock as me because they would have never thought to be rude to the police either and not allow them in. You are the idiot. In the future, do not talk to the police, get a lawyer and only talk to them with your lawyer present. You should not have allowed them in without a warrant, and you should not have allowed you or your stepson to talk to them without a lawyer. And you really should not have allowed your stepson to speak to the police without one or the other of his parents there. Never, 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 never let the police into your house without a warrant. Just to be clear, Jay was accused of a crime, not convicted of one, so for you to assume he's a criminal automatically would bother me too if that were my son. Plus, you don't know the exact circumstances as to how the console was obtained, for all you know, his mom could have bought it from a third party. So again, who are you to call a 16-year-old a criminal when you just made an assumption based on what the police told you? You failed Jay in a big way. Wait, what if the police knock on my door in a home that I own where I know I'm following the law? I'm going to let them in because that's what law-abiding citizens do. Belgian here, the police are here to help us. Opai is not the idiot, but not knowing your stupid rules of engagement with the police. People acting like everyone knows this. Meanwhile in the real world, people let cops in. Get the heck out with all these, you are the idiot votes. This I'm from the Netherlands and I would also let the police in, even offering them tea or coffee. I'm really wondering how the S can be the land of freedom with all these reactions. The police don't randomly show up at her house, they didn't randomly figure the kid had stolen property. They had her reason why, they explained it to her, and she being a reasonable person did what was right. Too many people watch too much television, thinking that asking for a lawyer will stop the police from doing their job. It doesn't, O.P.E. You are not the idiot. Your husband's reaction is way out of line. He should be more concerned about his son and the issue that brought them to your door. For a summer vacation this year I went all out. I rented a houseboat for five days. It cost about $22,000. We're celebrating my wife's 50th birthday and our 30th anniversary. It's a huge houseboat. We've been planning this for a while. All the kids are coming and bringing their significant others and family. I'm flying my son and his wife over from the Philippines for this. My youngest son attends university on the East Coast, and he has a new person in his life every few weeks. He's staying out there for the summer, but I'm also flying him in for the party. He wants me to pay for his new boyfriend to come. This is news to me because when he last spoke to me in July he had a girlfriend. He changes partners more often than he does his laundry. I said his boyfriend was more than welcome to join us, but would have to pay for his flight. The girl he was dating wouldn't come because she felt awkward being at a family party after only dating for a month, so I wouldn't buy her a ticket. My son says I'm being homophobic and an idiot for not bringing his boyfriend out. I pointed out that his sister and her wife of two years would be there. He hung up and called his mom. She thinks I should just pay. I probably will in order to keep the peace, but I think it's stupid to pay for a vacation for a kid I'll never see again. Andy's going to be in the family pictures forever. Am I the idiot for not letting my son's boyfriend come on vacation with us, unless he pays his way even though I'm paying for everyone else? This has nothing to do with him being a guy. It's about him only being with this person for a month. Who in their right mind would expect a person to pay for a vacation for a stranger? Also, what are the odds that they're still together at that point? He sounds like an insignificant other because the holiday goes for longer than his relationship has so far. Your son sounds entitled, no offense. Insignificant other lol, I love that. Nothing wrong with dating around, but this boy needs to realize he can't consider his one-month-long relationship the same as a marriage of two years. Your family members want to get to know your significant other because they have the potential to be family. They don't want to be introduced to and hang out with someone they'll never see again. Also, why would the boyfriend want to be stuck on a houseboat with a bunch of strangers celebrating big family milestones? Awkward turtle. Personally, I wouldn't want to be trapped on a boat with someone none of the rest of the family knows very well whether they pay or not. One month is not long enough to take a family vacation together. Your son's expectations are unrealistic and unreasonable. You might also consider that if absence makes the heart grow fonder, presence in a small stateroom on the family vacay may be the heart killer. I, 58, female, have two kids, Elizabeth, 28, female, and Michael, 26, male. Sadly, Michael was diagnosed with autism when he was just two. 
he's pretty easy to get along with and is a lovely person overall. He throws tantrums or acts really stubborn just occasionally. Elizabeth moved away for college at 18. She visits us sometimes and we keep in touch via calls. Visits naturally became less frequent over time and she hasn't been home since last Christmas. Last week she called and asked if it would be okay for her to come home for a few days. We were thrilled. However, she said she'd stay in a hotel and would only like to see me and my husband at a restaurant outside. I was heartbroken that she didn't want to include Michael. I asked her to please visit us at home so she could also see her brother. She wasn't having it. I asked her why she made this decision. She said she wanted a peaceful evening with her parents. I told her she needed to see her brother too since we're all a family and we need to stick together. Elizabeth told me never mind that she wasn't coming and that she made a mistake. I feel really bad for making her cancel the trip. My husband agreed with me that she shouldn't act like this towards Michael. A few other relatives say we were wrong and we should have agreed with our terms. Am I the idiot? Edit, he speaks a few sentences and needs constant care from others. He also has a lot of issues with seizures that sometimes slip out of control. We've already arranged for Michael to be looked after once we're no longer around. I had hoped Elizabeth to care for him, but she's clearly expressed that she would never do that. You are the idiot. Food for thought, how many times have you and Elizabeth spent quality time together without Michael and without him being mentioned or imposing on your time together? How many times has Elizabeth spent time with her dad without Michael? How many times has she had your complete undivided attention? Often, siblings of people with special needs are overshadowed, forgotten about, and expected to grow up faster because they can't rely so much on their parents. Your daughter moved out at 18. She's barely been home. This is because home isn't enjoyable. She probably resents Michael for taking away time with mom and dad. Be there for her with undivided attention. She was asking for this and you said no. Yeah, I think we're missing a lot here. Op sounds like one of those parents who makes everything about Michael and whose plan is for their daughter to take over when they can no longer take care of Michael. Poor Op's daughter, I can feel she resents her parents and I don't blame her. It's heartbreaking. Also, grimaced, sadly he was diagnosed with autism. Sincerely an autistic person. As a parent who's currently fighting for a diagnosis for my youngest child that sentence made me twitch too. I'll be celebrating the day we get an official diagnosis because it means we can access the support my child clearly needs. The fact that I can't go out to have one dinner with just her daughter speaks volumes. Your daughter's trying to establish a relationship with you, and you've rejected her because she doesn't want one with her brother. She doesn't want to meet Michael. It doesn't matter if he's autistic or not. Siblings don't always get along and you can't force them to. She has reasons not to want to see him which are hers to deal with. Don't pressure her to have a relationship she doesn't want to have. I-27 male work as a quant in finance and make 400000 per year after taxes. Unlike a lot of my colleagues, I don't save my entire paycheck because I feel I'll enjoy it more now than when I'm old and decrepit. This usually amounts to 20% expenditure for a month. Much of it, 10000 is spent on rent, but I also spend a significant amount on clothes and grooming products, bespoke suits, watches, cologne, recreational activities like ski trips, BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, classes, tennis, poker, psychedelics, etc. I still manage to save a decent amount every month and I'm enjoying life so I don't see the issue. My girlfriend thinks that I shouldn't be spending as much and should be saving almost all my income. I don't think it's any of her business how I spend my money because she's not the one earning it and I politely tell her so when she bugs me about it. When I tell her this, she gets angry and says as my girlfriend she has a right to have a say in how I spend my money. I don't think so because it's not her money. She further says I have to consult her before I spend it, and I tell her no. Am I in the wrong here? I have a right to spend my money how I like. No idiots here. Your girlfriend isn't wrong, your spending pattern is frivolous and unnecessary by most people's standards. Still, more importantly, when you lose your job, you'll have grown accustomed to a lifestyle you can then no longer sustain. What you're doing is stupid. That being said, it is your prerogative to be as stupid with your money as you want if it's your money. That will change if and when you marry and or have kids with this person though. At that point, the needs of your child especially need to come before your own. And if your girlfriend then wife decides to stay home with the kids, you'll have to provide for her too. And then yes, she will have a say in how you spend your money. If she's not marriage material, keep doing what you're doing. Otherwise, think long and hard about what's wise here.
Even if I lose my job, I have 200,000 in savings already, contribute 10,000 per month to set savings, and a further 70,000 in investments, so it's not as if I'll be hurting for cash even then. I've also told her that if we get married, I'd still prefer separate finances. If you did build a life together your finances could not truly be separate. $200,000 in savings gives you 10 months to continue along the same path, maybe a little bit longer depending on the circumstances. You'll pay half of that just for rent. If you're confident you can switch to an equally or more lucrative job within a year or so, more power to you. I guess it's a system failure that people like you with ridiculous salaries like that can even exist. Things can turn on a dime for many other reasons. Much of it taller 10,000 is spent on rent. What taller 10,000 a month on rent? Dude, you're being an idiot to yourself to spend that much on a place you don't own. I doubt your girlfriend said you have to consult me before you spend your money. It's more that you've spoken about your future together, maybe even marriage, and she's bringing up a lifestyle conversation and has different ideas about saving, etc. You can probably spend your money how you wish. It's not a matter of being an idiot, but one of compatibility. You two have fundamentally different opinions on money management, lifestyles, and problem resolution. As a banker, I recommend reconsidering your spending as things can change.